London's Community Kitchen supports nine boroughs and more with food supplies. During this pandemic, they've fed and supported over 70,000 people in this city of 10 million. The most British of the British queues. We're told the queue at Wimbledon is exemplary. We know the queue at the post office is mandatory. That the queue when you're running late is excruciating. And the queue you get in just before the queue extends is worth celebrating. There's nothing more British than a British queue. Coronavirus lockdown has been symbolised by queues. Queues at the supermarkets, queues at the pharmacies, queues at the petrol stations, queues with two metres distancing. But the most British of the British queues is the one nobody wants to talk about. A queue nobody expects to end up in. A queue for other people, not people like us. The most British of the British queues is a queue of invisible people. Safa has been in lots of queues, queuing at the border queuing in the camps, queuing at immigration, but this is one queue she never expected to have to join after those. Her son didn't make it to this one. Her husband got left behind. She says, I've trained my body now, so hunger is normal. The children get more that way. Maxine, a single mother to a six-year-old, can't explain to her child why they're in this queue. In no time she lost her job, grandma lost the house, grandma had a stroke, school got closed down, no more free meals, so now they're queuing in the most British of the British queues, the one nobody wants to be caught in. London Community Kitchen doesn't open until 3pm. Anton arrives early, 11am. Special permissions. His child's funeral is at 4pm. The other children need to eat first. Frank says it's not been like this since the war. Cued all his life, now he's 89, feeding one neighbour with Alzheimer's and another that's blind. This is not a cue for food. This is a cue for life. Jane is starting to find it difficult to remember things these days. Her stomach growls so loud she cannot hear her thoughts. Growls so loud she says sometimes people treat her like she's not human anymore. And what of the people on the psychiatry wards relying on these volunteers? The elderly locked in care homes relying on these volunteers? And what about people with disabilities? What about the families who live in the shadows? People without the papers that allow them to speak of hunger? People the government would sooner deport than feed? This is the most British of the British queues. The one nobody wants to talk about. The queue nobody expects to end up in. The queue for other people, not people like us. Never people like us. Until it is us. Until it is you in a queue of invisible people, in a queue that is not for food, but a queue that is for life. London's Community Kitchen volunteers provide dignity to thousands of London's communities. The Hispanic community in Lambeth and Brixton. The Afro-Caribbean community in Luton. The North African community in Archway. The South Asian community in Newham. Afro-Caribbean and Irish communities in Haringey. Both refugees and citizens in Brent and Harrow. Eastern European communities in Barnet. Everyone in Hillingdon, Enfield and Camden. The most British of the British queues is not just a queue for food. This is a queue for life. Hunger is the symptom, but callousness is the cause. In ten years of austerity, welfare state's stomach is pining. No crumbs made their way to the back of this queue. This is the most British of the British queues. Every age, every gender, able-bodied and disabled, housed and unhoused, citizen and refugee, people with no papers, people with no pennies, people with nothing. This is Britain. This is a British queue. This is the most British of the British queues. Only the volunteers in the community kitchen stand between this invisible queue and thousands of people disappearing. This is not a queue for food. This is a queue for life.